Buff Gaming here with an early game money making tutorial for Kinshi version 0.97 and hopefully several versions after. So far, after two weeks, I started on day one, so now I'm day 15, 14 days later. I have made 175,000 cats. I have never been in a fight. I have never saved. I have never reloaded. It is that easy. Um, after seven to eight days of doing this, uh, or after day seven or eight, you can AFK for 10 minutes at a time without any kind of worry. And, uh, you know, go walk your dog, whatever you have to do. Watch a movie uh, and you just check back every now and then or work on other companions. It's a very easy way to make money. So what you need to do quickly is mine the copper just outside of Shobatai. This is a wanderer start, so you should start in Shobatai. You're going to start out mining this, and whenever your inventory gets full, you just come back in and sell it. Once you get around 3,000 cats, so long as you have a little bit of food, you want to go to one of these two bars and find a companion. Uh, the cheaper the better. You don't need someone with good skills. Once you have a second, a second companion, get both of them out here mining. It supports two people. Let them mine until you can afford a backpack. And let them keep on mining until you can afford this 14,000 cat bug house. Keep on mining. Uh, that's the boring part. It's slow at first, but hey, this is Kinchy. That's how it works. Once you can, build a small research bench. Research how to build a small house. Then research how to build pick level 2. Immediately build your research bench level 2 and start researching how to make leather armor and then research all of your storage items or storage options, those don't require any books and research regular lighting. It's the only lighting you need just gives you ceiling lamps. From that point on uh, you should be getting almost close to where you need to be. You will build a leather crafting bench right here and you will set one of your characters to making traders leather non-stop for the rest of his days if you wish. Very close to him you want to have an armor storage uh, container, a leather storage container, and a fabric container. You want them close by so he doesn't have to run around. Also somewhere in the house you want to have just a regular container for your own ease and a food storage so that people will know to eat and you don't have to worry about them. Let him make armor for a while. Rise with that, he might be operating at a loss, but again, you can use your second person to mine over here to keep him going, and it doesn't take long at all for him to get above 20 in leather craft, or sorry, 20 in armor crafting. Once he's broken 20, he's making a profit. At that point, you don't have to worry about going out of the walls ever again, so you are completely safe after that. You can leave everybody in here except for when you go out to sell. Um, once you get some more money, you want to buy a third companion and uh, make a weaponsmith. Uh, you'll need that level two uh, research bench to, to research both this and the weaponsmith. So once you get that going, nearby you want some sort of weapon storage like the cabinet, and you'll also want iron plate storage. You're going to use these three stores, this mechanical store and these two general shops to buy all the materials you'll need. You're going to be buying a lot of leather, a lot of fabric, and even more iron plates. Most of your money is going to come from the leather, but you want the iron plates so that you can't have that third person doing something and leveling up a skill. And actually, these uh, iron clubs are going to be very useful for you when it comes time for you to start leveling up your strength. So let them continue to do that, and before you know it, you'll be making considerable profit. Again, I'm two weeks in. And my armor crafter is around uh, 62, which means he's making high level constantly and occasionally specialist. By himself, he's making over 50,000 cats per day right now. Uh, he's only recently gotten to, to 62. You have to break 60 to start making high quality armor on the regular. But once you do, like I said, over 50,000 cats per day. Once he gets to specialist and you're getting master workout pretty regularly, you're going to be tapping these guys out of money. I'm already to the point to where all three of these shops run out of money every day, and I'll soon have to start tapping the bakery, the hat store, uh, this store, and a couple of bars. And within a week, you'll be tapping all of Shobatai out of their money every single day. These two guys never have to stop working. The general stores do produce enough iron plates, fabric, and leather to make sure that they're able to keep going. 
If you upgrade your weaponsmith to a level 2, be careful. He will start using cloth at that point, and then you might have shortages of fabric. And with this town being anti-hemp, it's pretty hard for you to get any kind of fabric going. So, uh, if you'd like to see in more detail or a little more slowly how we got to this point, just stay tuned. I'm going to go through all this step by step, skipping over the most boring parts right after the cut. All right, we're uh, we're going to do a wanderer start because that, according to the description, that's how the game is intended to be played. And you can do other starts with this strategy, and it will work just fine. Uh, if you start near Squin, uh, it's even easier. I don't remember which beginning it is where you start your Squin. It's the Sheck City, but Squin has a copper deposit within the walls, so you can just AFK as long as you want. The only thing you have to worry about is hunger, and uh, it makes it very easy. So uh, uh, let's. I don't want to look like this. Let's say hit randomize four times. One, two. Oops. There we go. I was in the wrong window. One, two, three, four. That's what we're going to look like. All right. Confirm. So we're going to start in Shobatai, which is fine. Uh, Shobatai uh, nearby has this copper deposit. And let me go ahead and make that a job. Why not? And go full speed ahead. And that's where we're going to make our initial money. Um, I'm not going to stop and show you every little skirmish and so forth that happens. But I will tell you that I'm not going to get into any fights. If I see any fight nearby, I'm running inside. Uh, if I see bone dogs or uh, skimmers nearby, I will lure them to the guards and let the guards do all the dirty work. And then I'll take the meat out for my own food. Otherwise, I'm just going to use sales of this copper that I'm mining to pay for everything. Uh, at least until we get armor rolling. Again, uh, be careful when you see people walk by. Because you're alone, manhunters or slavers might decide you're an easy target. But again, you should be able to run back to safety here pretty easily. Uh, if you see fights, like I just saw a fight over there and you want to get some money, then uh, you know you can go loot or, or pick up fallen bodies and uh, use that as um, a means of income. I'm not even going to bother with that uh, unless I see animals because animals give us meat and I, I need food right now, so. Uh, look at that, there's a bone dog over there. So, who are they fighting? Anyway, I'm not gonna bore you guys with this too much. I will uh, jump back in after I've mined a good bit of uh, copper and let you see where we are at. All right, I'm headed back into town. See, I'm running very slow, normal speed. Uh, I just finished my first load of copper as you can see and uh, that should put me just over 3,000 cats because I started with a thousand the only other stuff I have are three meat and that's from that bone dog I showed earlier um, so let me go ahead and saw this okay and now I have 3,120 cats that should be enough to hire people. You can generally find somebody for 3,000 cats, occasionally 2,500 or even free. Uh, but sometimes you get unlucky and you can only find people for 6,000 or more. So I'm going to look around, see if I can find somebody for 3,000. If I didn't have this food, I wouldn't do it quite yet. Since I do have a little bit of food, I'm going to go ahead and, and try to find a second person. Again, we haven't even been playing 24 hours yet, but we're, we're going to go ahead and try to crew up if we can. Let me go talk to this person, Izumi, and see what Izumi has to say. Uh, Izumi needs somebody to sponsor their research. Uh, in general, this apparently is a kid who wants to do research, and we don't believe him or whatever, according to the responses, and always agree with whatever they're saying, and you'll almost always get who you want. So uh, instead of just calling him kid or telling him to get lost, we're going to say, yeah, we'll help you with your research. Uh, oh, look at that. They only went 2,500. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll give you 2500 And we now have two people. So let's uh, make sure that Izumi also has the same job. And uh, let's, let's send them both out here. And instead of going straight into the mining, I'm going to let one of them 
Uh, I'm gonna let one of them go build a campfire nearby and start cooking that food. Uh, you can't build it right here, but you can start building campfires really close, right around here. You can actually start building um, buildings and things like that until pretty far out here. So don't get your hopes up. You can't build a little outpost that close. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cook this food and get back to mining. And we'll be right back once we have a bit more, a bit more proper ore. Uh, one quick note about food. You see, uh, I haven't been gone very long. I've mined three here so far, and then in Azumi's inventory, I have three more. So not too much, but I noticed there are a few skimmers running up here. And while we stand no chance at killing these skimmers, uh, these gate guards do. And that can get you a, a quick and easy source of food. So what I'm going to do is run over here by the gate guards. And in Kinshi, for some reason, I don't really know why, um, for some reason, actually I'll leave it past. Um, animals know that you're attacking them even if they can't see you. So I'm going to put it on the slowest speed right here. And watch, as soon as I declare an attack, they're going to start running at me. See, here they come. Now I don't actually intend to attack them. Instead, what I'm going to do is uh, just chicken out and run the other way and uh, just try to try to keep them aggroed and lure them towards the guard. If you run too soon or too far, they will stop chasing you. So you want to keep them kind of close. But uh, once, once they get close enough to the gate guards, they'll run out and all those samurai will slaughter them for us. If you are interested in leveling your skills, that would be an excellent time to actually fight them. But that's not what this tutorial is about, so I'm going to let the gate guards do all the work. And as you can see, uh, these skimmers are no issue whatsoever for uh, these samurai. And we're going to go ahead and run out and start gathering up the meat. There's a fair amount of meat on each one, maybe even a bit more than we want. So you know what, I'm going to... I'm going to leave the rest of that meat on the carcasses and maybe gather it up here in a minute because once I finish this mining job uh, I should have room to, uh, or I should have money to buy backpacks and such. So anyway, I'm going to turn these jobs back on. Just wanted to let you uh, know that and see that. And I'll see you, uh, I'll see you in the next cut. Okay, it's uh, 1900 hours on day four. I made a couple of trips back to uh, sell some copper ore. After the first trip, I, uh, I bought a big backpack for Izumi here. And uh, as you see, we had a fair amount of meat in her backpack. Uh, that's because we did go back to those two skimmers that were killed over there and get the meat out of them. And we have a little extra already cooked over here and Gecko's holding one extra raw one. So, so we have plenty of food for a while. We haven't actually purchased anything in this game, except for uh, we did pay 2,500 for Izumi. But uh, because, uh, like I said, it's day four at 1900 hours and the shops are going to be closing fairly soon, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go into town and sell off these, uh, what is it, 15 or so copper ore that I have because that should put me over the amount necessary to buy this uh, bug house here, this residential house for 14000 and also um, I want to go before the stores close so that I can go ahead and buy some building materials and get started on the beginnings of research. A little more money would be nice, but I'm going to go ahead and begin that now. So I want to keep an eye on Gecko, who I'm going to leave behind. I'm going to turn Izumi's job off for the time being so she doesn't try to go back there constantly. And uh, let's see. Let's see where selling this puts us. Just over 14,000, which is enough for the house. All right, we now have our own home. And it takes three building materials to get a research bench. And I'm going to go ahead and spend, well, I only have 600 left, so I can only buy one book. But uh, who knows, maybe, maybe I'll be able to get a, another book or two before the day ends. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I will, but 
you know, it would be nice if we could, so we can get started on the research. I'm going to build our small research bench right over here on the edge. And this is just temporary. Uh, the very next thing we'll be building after the small research bench will be a level two research bench. And uh, it's a different shape, so it'll go in a different place. But once you place this, the uh, level two research bench, you can upgrade that one all the way to the final one in the game. Uh, so uh, this one is just temporary. We do need to upgrade to research level two before we can begin making armor and start making the money. So uh, I think we have to research a small shack first before we can do that. Let's take a look. Go research. So to get tech level two, yeah, we need to know small house. And small house takes two books. And uh, well, I guess we won't be able to do much research tonight. I was hoping we could. And actually, uh, well, if it only takes two books, I could sell this splint kit. But let's go ahead and do that. go there they are and uh, how much is this worth I don't need a lot of this stuff yeah who needs clothes did I manage to squeeze out another book I did I don't think it's gonna help but, but whatever you know we're gonna need it eventually so that's the research bench put the books in from a distance and we can start on the small house it should only take two hours, but it might take longer. I'm not sure. And I say that because uh, I'm guessing Azumi has one for a science skill. Oh, Azumi is the researcher. So let's make her our designated researcher. And uh, make that her job. Let her get started on that. And then tomorrow morning, hopefully we'll have enough mind that we can go ahead and research tech two and uh, get started on mining. All right, we're about midday on uh, day five. And I made, a, as I said, I made a few trips uh, and we saw earlier that I put in the small research bench in our new house and took care of the first bit of research, uh, the small house that we need to know before we can research tech two. Tech two requires six books, so I was mining overnight and you see now we have a uh, is that uh, 20 more ore? They're getting pretty fast at it. And so I'm going to send Izumi in to buy some more books and get started on uh, the research for tech level 2 and also for leather crafting. She'll also need to do other research for uh, storage containers. Most of that research doesn't require any books, uh, but it is necessary if we want to be able to go AFK once we start making armor. So let's sell off all this copper. Okay, and I don't want to buy all the books possible, uh, just in case, um, just in case we have enough. Well, it looks like I bought all, all of them possible already. No, I could afford one more, but I'm not getting it. Okay, yeah, I don't want to buy all the books possible because uh, I, there's a chance that we might be able to go ahead and, and start work on armor fairly soon. So let's go ahead and put all those in there and see what our research looks like. Um, gonna research tech level two and actually we'll stop right there come to think of it because once we research that we're going to build our um, our level two research bench. I believe that takes eight uh, iron plates. It might be six or ten, I don't remember exactly, but we'll know short, shortly enough. Meanwhile, uh, Gecko is over here still mining away. You want to check on him occasionally because if this hits five, it will be full and he'll stop working. So as soon as this uh, tech level two finishes, we'll take a look at what we need to build that uh, 
that research bench and then we'll know exactly how many iron plates we need to save up for. And iron plates, if I remember correctly, are roughly 100 cats each. Okay, build tech research 2 takes 10 iron plates. Um, and actually, let's go ahead and see while, we, while we're saving up enough money and enough copper to do that. Let's see if we can get some of these storage containers out of the way. Item storage. Uh, as you see, no books are necessary. Storage boxes farming. Regular storage boxes. Okay, and that's all we're going to research to begin with. And, uh, and once that's done, we'll check and see if there are more storage options available. If not, we'll go ahead and uh, and see if we can build that level 2 research bench which will open up the option to research leather armor crafting. Just made a quick jump forward, got a few more ore and uh, we're going to go ahead and cash it in real quick because uh, once nighttime hits we won't have the option to to buy any iron plates. You can always you can always sell your ore at night to the bartenders, but they're not going to sell you any iron plates there. So we need tin. Can't afford that. Oh no, I miscalculated. I need two more. Oh, it's because they're not 100 each. They're 171 each. Oh well, I guess we'll just take care of that in the morning because I don't think... No, we're not going to... We're not going to get any time, so I'll uh, I'll see you in the morning. All right, we have the we're at the morning of day six, and I think we might be able to get started now. We have 18 copper ore that we mined overnight, so let's go ahead and move into town, get that bench up and running, and see if we have enough to get uh, our leather armor crafting begun. Get to work, shopkeeper. Come on, quit slacking off. Been mining in the desert all night just for you. All right. Gonna stay zoomed out in case somebody tries anything sneaky with Gecko over there. Okay. I think we needed three more iron. And uh, I'm sure we'll need, well, I don't know if we'll need some more books or not. But I uh, have 3,300, what the heck, I'll buy three more books just to see where that puts us. And let's head inside. I'm going to shut the door earlier so that nobody would go in and try to look around at anything. I did leave, uh, I did leave some iron plates in the ground over here. Okay, and now it's time to build that level 2 research bench. I'm just going to stick it in the back here. There we go. And do I have 10? Oh, looks like I bought one extra. That's okay, I'll need it for the uh, leather bench. And uh, Izumi, you go back there and get to work. Shouldn't take too long to build. Gecko's gonna stay out there a little longer and make some money, but as soon as we get the armor going, I think we'll be able to bring him in the walls and uh, pay more attention on the interior and not have to worry about any kind of attacks. Azumi stopped working there for a second, so let me temporarily make her uh, an engineer by trade so she keeps on working on it even after she runs out of condition to fill. Gonna check over here, make sure he didn't fill that up with five. Oops, wrong person. And once this is done we can go ahead and dismantle the the old small research bench but uh, let's make sure to take the books out of it first because uh, I don't know what's gonna happen to the contents if we were just to dismantle it directly right now. And we're just about done. I'm going to slow down time a little bit as soon as she finishes. Good. And Izumi. 
How about you take all those books, put them in the new bench. Very good. And let's see, what do we need for crafting? Uh, nope, smithing. Leather armor crafting. Four books? Hey, look at that. We already have four books. And we might need to do some more uh, storage research, so let's take a look at the different storage options available to us and get Izumi working on that as well. Um, I don't remember where storage is, so I'm going to read through all of them just in case. Storage boxes crafting. There we go. We need that one. No books necessary. Storage boxes or uh, no, no books. Might as well learn it. Hopefully those will be all the storage boxes we need to research. You know, I'm going to let Izumi research and I'm going to go ahead and take a gamble here and ask Gecko to come on into town and uh, let him do some constructing of all those all those storage boxes we want complete. Now Izumi, you should be researching, right? Oh, she's researching over here. Go research over there. Uh, the problem is that her job says start uh, to operate the small research bench, so let's replace that with oops replace that with research bench level two and that should get her slamming and jamming let's get rid of this small research bench it leaves behind two and uh, she's gonna toil away at the books while gecko tries to make some money here and it's speed time up again Somebody's chasing me. They must want to check my bags. No? Oh, they just have weird pathfinding, that's all. Yeah, I want to trade. Why don't you buy this from me? And, uh, oh yeah. We're going to get started on our containers. Let's see what containers we know how to build already. We will need armor storage, but I want to go ahead and place the armor uh, bench first before I make that. Food storage, we definitely need one of those. We need a general storage chest and uh, that looks like the only ones we're going to need right away. It takes three building materials to do those and right now we have two building materials right there. So let's go ahead and buy one more. Show me what you have. Very good. And Gecko, get over here. And you take over the engineering for a while. Okay, let's build food storage right there and general storage chest. Let's make it right here by the door so those are both easy to access. Oh, Zoomy, you're not an engineer anymore. Gecko, oh, I guess you need a job, don't you, Gecko? He's not a very good engineer as long as it's taking him. All right, so we can put all of that food Zoomy had into this food box and what the heck go ahead and put that one plate here I think we're gonna need five more plates but we have plenty of money so uh, yeah I guess gecko has time to go get a couple of more ore I don't think it's necessary but you know I don't wanna I don't wanna stop the guy from working if he's got a hard work ethic we're just waiting for that leather armor crafting tech to be researched and we'll be able to uh, to move on. We haven't been given too much trouble over here. Uh, generally by this point, at least a couple of times, something would have come around and give you trouble, but so far I just had some samurais that came and questioned us a little bit, but we were a couple of smooth talkers and didn't have to worry about them for very long. Alright, looks like they're just about done. So, you know what, I'll let him go ahead and get his third 
and then once he has a third one we'll come back to town and let's build that uh, leather armor crafting bench now rotate it around and put it right over here that looks like a good place for it it needs eight iron plates we have one already so let's go let's go in here and buy seven iron plates and you know what? we're probably going to need a little more than that because I do believe that some of the containers we want to build are uh, I do believe some of them are going to require more but uh, you know it's still mid-afternoon so we have plenty of time Go keep an eye on that. So um, I should be able to go ahead and place uh, the storage containers, or at least where we expect them to be. So we're going to want three storage containers very close to this leather crafting bench. Uh, the one we want central most will be our um, our cloth or our fabric chest we want that one say we're about right there leather uh, we'll put that right above it and these are close enough that he should be able to grab things out of them without running at all really he shouldn't have to run at all and then we're going to want an armor storage chest nearby that uh, once his inventory is full he can Whoever our armorsmith turns out to be can stick it in there. So, looks like it's going to take us two building materials, three building materials, and one iron plate. Very good. That should be, I believe, all we need for the time being. Um, we have the one iron plate, but we still need three building materials. So, you know what, Izumi? Sorry you're out in the desert. Why don't you come back in here and get those three building materials for us? And then the rest of the money we have, we're going to spend on leather and cloth. Now, this store is great for selling you uh, a lot of iron that we're going to need for... Um, for weaponsmithing when we start that. Uh, it also has generator cores sometimes which are great for strength training but we're not going to cover that in this tutorial. And these two stores they generate uh, about 40,000 uh, cats per day. This one usually resets a day with 20 to 25. This one 15 to 20,000. And they're within trading distance of this house. So we'll be doing most of our selling of products to these two at least until we're tapping them out and we need to go to other places. Um, but enough of that. Zoom and get back in here. Gecko needs those. Uh, Gecko needs those materials from you. Gecko can't hold those materials yet. Oh, he can now. Okay. And Zoomy, what the heck? You do what you want. If you wanna, if you wanna go mine some more ore, I guess it's okay. I don't think we're gonna need it. Oh, you know what we forgot to do? I did mention cloth. Oh yeah, I started talking about that one store. Forgot about this store, which is just as important. This one is gonna give us most of the leather and um, most of the cloth that we need. So as you can see, ten leather, nine cloth. Let's go ahead and buy all the cloth, the fabric, I guess they call it, and. Uh, if we can afford it, uh, we can. What the heck? Go ahead and buy all the leather, too. We're not going to be making very much of a profit right off the bat. So we have to be careful with how we spend our stuff right now. Um, it won't take too long before we're making more money. Gecko, hopefully you're 
here working on these containers because I got some stuff to contain. Since we have this food storage with the food in it, we don't have to worry about micromanaging that too much. We just have to make sure there's food in the pot and everybody should be fine. Our armor, armor storage is done. Looks like, uh, looks like our fabric chest is just about done. And now, oh, where are you going? Gecko, you have an iron plate, don't you? Or did you spend it somewhere? Well, we need to go buy an iron plate real quick. I guess that one iron plate that was in his inventory was needed for the bench, and I just didn't realize it. So, we need one iron plate, please, sir. Gecko, get back to work. And who should we make our, our armor crafter? Um, you know, I'll let Gecko do it because Azumi is so good at researching. Oh, I guess that wasn't finished. Sorry, guys. One more time. Good thing I got in here just before the store closed. Man, that was kind of close. And you know what? Just in case I made a mistake, and since the store is closed, I'm going to go ahead and uh, buy an extra one. We need these containers because we need these containers because they won't automatically pull their materials out of these regular chests. They need the, the specialized chest if you want them to automatically place or pull from any of those. And you know what? I'm tired of watching them in the desert, so I'm going to remove their copper mining jobs. Oh, mouse is getting out of control. Alright, so now all we know how to make is traitor's leathers, and that is perfectly fine. So we're going to give him the job of making leather armor. And Izumi, your job's going to be researching, even though I don't know if we, I don't know that we have anything for you to research right now. But there's some leather. There's some fabric. And Gecko, you should get to work. Very good. Now, if you watch for full speed, we're increasing. Uh, the amount that this leather armor is being completed much more quickly than the materials are decreasing. That means it's going to take less than one each of these to make one of these. Um, I know that sounds silly and very self-apparent, but if you actually look at what it says is required, it says 1.7 materials to make it. Um, maybe that means one of each, but when I later try other items, Looks like a lot of them reduce at the same rate, even though they have different um, material costs. So I'm not so sure I trust that 1.7 number. Um, there's probably some mechanic in it that I just don't realize how it works yet. But uh, Gecko, you see, made. Let me put it on. But he made this trader's leather right here. Uh, it's a prototype quality. It's the worth quality, and you see we can sell it for only 41. So we are not making a profit here. Um, once he starts making the next quality up, shoddy quality, we'll be making a very small uh, profit. And actually, we do need to do some research. We need to give him light. He can't really make good quality stuff right now. But when he can, these lights will be important because that's how uh, you keep their skill from dropping whenever it gets dark. So. Indoor lighting will give us a ceiling lamp, which is exactly what we need. It will also give Azumi something to do when I turn her jobs back on. And since we have a few extra books, let's see what else we can get started. Uh, maybe basic weapon smithing and basic weapon grades. And we're going to go like this for a little while. You can make money faster if you're willing to send Azumi out in the desert and have her keep on toiling away at the mine, but. I'm lazy, and I like just to be able to walk AFK and not have to worry about whether or not somebody gets hurt. So I'm going to let this uh, move along, and I'll be back whenever we start making a little bit more money to show you how this is going. All right, we're just about ready for our first major haul of armor. Let's... Uh, Grab that one there, and you see I've got a full inventory of armor. 
Um, Gecko here, our armor crafter, his armor smithing is up to 24 already, which means expected armor quality of shoddy. Sometimes worse, sometimes better. And um, as you can see so far, we have primarily prototype, but some shoddy here and there. Prototype um, aren't profitable. They only sell for 41, but you see the shoddies, they sell for 310. And you can easily buy a piece of leather and a cloth for 310. So from that point on, you're in profitability. Now the prices, the sell prices go up dramatically as the quality improves. And since all he's going to do 24 seven is make armor and eat dried meat, his skills should go up pretty quickly. You see I have a light right here above his head. That's important so that his skill doesn't go down at night because then he could end up producing lower quality armor and not maximizing profit. Uh, Izumi doesn't have much to do at the moment, but what we're going to do is let this run some more. I'm going to go sell this off. Uh, we've already stocked up a little bit on leather and cloth, but I'm going to go sell this stuff, try to fill these up, and let his skill continue to boost. And once we have a little bit of spending money, we're going to start on weapons construction as well and hire ourselves a third, uh, a third teammate. All right, so I was uh, just churning away, uh, making more armor, and uh, let's see if I have any right now. I may have just sold it all. Yeah, you see, I'm making shoddy grade. I'm getting the occasional standard grade, which sells for about 1,100, and I've been using that to refill here. I see, I have plenty of leather and fabric now, but that's not why I paused here. Um, I mentioned at some point I wanted to get a third person. And uh, I noticed in an outhouse over here a, uh, a talk box. And it seems to be this is L's. So uh, let me go talk to L's. Or actually, I don't want to talk to L's quite yet. Let me make a few more pieces of armor because L's, I remember he's a drunk and a thief, but he'll join you. And uh, I don't remember if he wants money or not. So let me. Uh, let me get a couple more pieces of armor here and go talk to L's and who knows maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll have found ourselves our third party member and hopefully for cheap I don't remember how much L's costs well, maybe he wants you to buy him some rum or something I just don't remember but maybe he's free and you know what if he's free that's awesome if he's uh if he's expensive maybe we'll just miss our shot so let's go take a look there's old L's hiding in the outhouse Are you getting food uh 300 cats. Sure, here, buy some food. Thank you kindly. The infamous rum thief. You don't look like a thief. You know what? That sounds friendly. I'll do that one. He's not a thief. He's just thirsty sometimes. The bar guards beat him up. He's got to drink rum from the distillery when no one's looking. Oh, poor elves. No one else shares with elves like you do. Uh, do we turn him in for a bounty? Tell him to relax, tell him he's got to do what he's got to do. Tricking other people with rum knows to sound like a thief. Right, else we got to look out for each other. Let's see, number two and yeah, number four sounds good. But looking out for each other sounds really good, so let's do that. Come work for me and I'll give you all the food and rum you could ever want else. Uh, you have bigger potential to being a rum thief. Team up with me. Keep on doing what you're doing, Alice. Well, it's number one or number two. I wonder which one. That's all from food and rum. I'm not trying to trick you. Oh. Let's see. Please? Yeah, it's not please. Oh, look at that. Oh, he's kind of... He's kind of chubby. Let's, let's randomize him uh, six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go, that's the L's that we're going to have. So now we have our 
third person. Uh, not quite ready to start we weapon smithing yet, but uh, you know, just wanted to show you how I was getting my third person, assuming he was gonna join. And now that we have three, I'll uh, I'll go back to uh, to pausing the recording and and see you again when we're ready to build some more. All right, I just sold a little bit of armor. Now I'm building a weapon cabinet, um, an iron plate storage box, and a weapon bench. Letting Izumi do the work rather than, the no than our normal engineer. And what the heck, Els can pitch in some labor too. Um, we're, we're making enough money now not to be rich, obviously, since I only have 30 cats, but enough that we can support ongoing leather crafting as well as some intermittent weapons crafting. So we're getting that put together. This was six iron plates. This was another iron plate. And then here we had two building materials, so it wasn't that expensive to build. And uh, I do have some extra iron plates. I bought all that I could since we'll need that to start working on the weapons. And even though he might not be the best at it, I'm going to let, um, oh, I already put my iron plates in there. Good. I'm going to let Els be our, our weapon smith. Since Izumi has, has already shown herself to be a, a quality researcher. And the types of weapons we'll be making will be iron clubs, on repeat. See, Els is already hard at work. The reason I choose iron clubs is because uh, the smaller weapons uh, seem to work well in their inventory. And what I mean by that is that sometimes if you're working with larger weapons, ones that take up a, a vertical two rows, sometimes um, when they make the first one, they'll equip it and then this will they'll have a second one in here and they try to grab it and for some reason can't and uh, that can cause some issues but look at this Els the rum thief had rum on him we only gave him 300 cats and it looks like he's given us wow, 1600 1700 back thank you I'll, uh, I've had Els before in another game <coughs> So I know he doesn't actually drink the rum, so I'll just go ahead and sell it and uh, we'll be even further on our way to riches. Let me check on the food situation while I'm here. I'm probably out. Yeah, I'm out of food. And a uh, quick note about food, when you're paying for food, which typically isn't necessary, it's very easy to go get some meat outside, just lure them to the guards, but I'm lazy. Uh, but when you're paying for food, if you're worried about money, just look at the ratio of nutrition to cost. So here you see we can buy dried meat for only 59 and it gives you 15 nutrition. So you're only paying like, uh, roughly four cats for one nutrition. These other foods don't have nearly as good of a ratio. Here you're paying more than 10 cats per nutrition. Here you're paying well over 10 cats. Here you're paying uh, over 10 cats per nutrition. So we're just going to stick with the dried meat since it has the best ratio of nutrition and we aren't traveling or anything so we're not worried about storage space. Alright, so let's get going. Just like, uh, just like with the armor, starting out L's is, uh, is not going to be operating at a profit. We're going to be leeching profits off of Gecko's leather crafting situation here. But, um, let's see, oh, it says sell value 271, and an iron plate costs us uh, 171, <clears throat> and I believe it takes two iron plates to make one, so yeah, we're losing a little bit of money on them right now, but uh, we'll, we'll soon be making money, and while I'm thinking about it, Els is going to need some light as well, so he's not uh, operating it. Uh, lower than necessary uh, quality because those are further up I'm going to give him two two lights and hopefully that'll give him all the light he needs 
He's operating the red right now, but uh, it went up some. Let's see if the second light puts him in the black. Good, in the black. So we are in good shape. And uh, yeah, gonna go back on pause. And uh, by the time I come back, we should be making better quality armor. I see right now a mixture of shoddy and standard. We should be getting up to high by the time I come back. And I'm gonna go ahead and work on some research as well. As uh, I mean, why not? Azumi needs something to do, right? Okay, be back in a few. All right, we're uh, coming up at the morning of day 15. Where is the sun? Who cares about sunrise? Uh, we started on the morning of day one, and 14 days later, or two weeks as we call it here in the world of Kinshi, two weeks later, we're, uh, we're gonna take stock of how things have progressed. We only have three people, uh, one of which is Gecko, who all he's been doing since around day six is making trader's leather. And you see his armor smithing is just over 60 now, meaning he should make high quality armor on average. We have Ells, who was the last to join us and is doing weapon smithing. His, uh, his skill is in around 51. It says weapon quality uh, MK1, but we don't have the technology to do that yet. So actually he's making a mixture of refitted blades and katan, or katan number one. Um, it costs two iron plates to, to make these. So we're profiting roughly 200, uh, 200 cats for each one of these that he makes in the a little over a hundred for each one of these that he makes. And he makes uh, about 20 to 22 per day. So a small amount of money, but and it, it's at least a profit. Um, and more importantly, I guess, is that he's leveling up his skills so that when we do go get some books, he'll be ready to make some good weapons. Now the profit being made here by Gecko is more significant. So, um, as you see, I have some leathers ready for Izumi to sell here, and uh, some more in her inventory, and I am full up. So I don't think I have any regular or standard grade left. Uh, I did just make my first specialist grade. You'll occasionally make a grade higher than your current grade, and uh, as you can see, all of the high grades are worth uh, 2600 each when you sell them and a specialist grade will be 4600 now once he breaks 80 leather crafting uh, or 80 armor crafting he'll be making specialists almost every time and so his profit will go far up but if we suppose that for the moment at least he only makes 2600 uh, for each one of these leathers and then we look at this time this says that it takes four hours to make a trader's leather I've actually found, and you see he's at the beginning of it, and what, it's 6.56 right now? I've actually found that it only takes him an hour to make one. Uh, we were at 6.56, so let's see, it's 7, we'll stop at 7.26 here. There we go, it's 7.26. See, he's just over halfway through, so he's making one of these per hour. So it's about uh, 2,600 times 10 is... 26,000, you double that for 20 hours in a day, it's 52,000, and then he's going to have a few extra. So he's making he's making a little over 60,000 a day right here, plus, uh, you know, a pittance here. So at this moment, we're making, what do we say, 60, 70,000 per day uh, just off of this trader's leather. And you might wonder why I don't have more money at that rate. Well, he's only recently, he's only recently broken 60. So, um... High quality is pretty new to us, and we've been spending a lot to stock up on the ingredients. He doesn't go through these ingredients very very quickly. That could easily last him a couple of days right there. Now, Els on the other hand does go through materials pretty quickly, but he is making a profit, and all we do is we go around to the three shops in town that sell iron here, here, and here, and we buy all of it. Uh, we're gonna get almost all of our leather and cloth from this store right here and uh, they can keep going like this as long as you want I'm just buying dried meat from the bars to feed everybody they produce more than enough and it's nice and cheap food that they're happy with and 
all you really have to do is just come in, empty out their uh, empty out their storage containers. Uh, I can't really do it right now for him, but I emptied this one out almost. So keep those empty, keep the food and the ingredients full, and you can go AFK 10-15 minutes, come back and check on them, walk your dog, go eat a snack or whatever you gotta do. It's a nice easy way to just go AFK, make money, no risk, um, you know, watch Netflix, whatever you wanna do. Uh, you will run into a problem, and uh, I'll, I'll show you the problem here. We're only getting a small taste of it at the moment. The problem is actually a lack of money. This town generates a little over 100000 a day. And uh, once you get up to the specialist quality and you're knocking out a masterwork every now and then, um, these guys are going to start running out of money. Uh, you see, he's already out because he didn't have time to replenish from the day before. And uh, so we can go to a neighbor here. Now they do replenish their money about once a day, not necessarily overnight or in the morning. You might have to come back later in the afternoon, but uh, you can see it doesn't take very long to uh, to tap out all the money that a vendor has. Bars don't have very much. I think they make less than ten thousand a day. Most of the stores make uh, twenty to twenty-five thousand each. I think uh, one or two might only make fifteen thousand or so per day. But yeah, that's that's a problem we run into. You see, this one's getting low already. If we go back and grab what was left back in the uh, in in our home back there, we'd probably tap him out or nearly tap him out. Um, so it can be it can be a bit of a problem. Um, the good news is that they do generate enough to keep them busy twenty four seven. They don't ever run out once you get going and you're making a decent profit. Um, you can always keep them stocked up with plenty of materials to, to keep on going. But, um, yeah, they will start to run out of food when, when you get above 80 in your armor smithing skill. Now, I know, so it took two weeks to get to this point, and uh, I haven't really accomplished much. Uh, I've just got these three people. Um, only two of them are really specializing in anything. and. I haven't been in a single fight at all whatsoever. Nobody's ever taken a swing with a weapon. Nobody's ever taken damage. Um, so you might, see, you might think, hey, that's a pretty boring way to do things. But I'm just showing that absent looting and all that other stuff, you can get, I have 175,000 cats right now after two weeks. A week from now, it will easily be over a million. Um, I'll say easily over a million. A week from now, we should be making uh, roughly 100,000 per day. So... Um, if we assume 100,000 per day starting now, we won't quite hit a million in a week, but it won't take long to get there. And uh, so, so at that point, it's like, why are you doing it? Well, as you see, Elves and Gecko, they don't do anything. Ever since they started crafting, they've never moved except by themselves to go get the food. That means you can be off around here doing whatever else you need to do. Uh, I have more than enough money. Uh, to hire as many people as I need to start outfitting them with decent equipment. Um, if I go get some recipes, Gecko is more than capable of making them decent armor at this point. Leather armor is not bad for starting out. And uh, you can even go start getting some, uh, some books and stuff to get a higher, more advanced research. Now, this won't, uh, this won't last forever. Uh, eventually, you're going to want to go out and make your own outpost and then... Uh, Money becomes less important, but money gets more difficult to obtain. However, you do need a good bit of money to, to really get going if you want to hire people and equip them initially. So this is a good way to do it. Um, it is faster to make money by stealing things. Um, if, if you're willing to, uh, to save scum, essentially. If you're just going to go around stealing constantly, you're going to get caught. And your guys are going to end up in jail, and that's not necessarily a good way to be, so you have to reload constantly, and even if you don't, the temptation is there, and I like to avoid that. So this is a good way to start out with a lot of money without any saves coming. I have not reloaded this game once. Um, and also, maybe you're playing uh, some characters that you feel like need to be 
of high moral standing. Maybe you want to join the holy nation for some reason, or you want to make a dojo of martial artists that only do good. Well, this is a way to only do good and and start out with all the money that you need, because this is just going to keep on coming in. And if you want to hire the people and go around and fight and start leveling up their skills, it's easy to do it, especially when you have this free flow of money coming in. So uh, I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, I'm not going to really take it any further than, uh, further along this route for, uh, for the money-making aspect. I might use these three to come back and make another tutorial about other things. Uh, but if you have any topics you'd like for me to cover, if I can, I will, I will definitely do so for you. Just uh, like and subscribe and leave me a comment down below letting me know uh, what type of tutorial you'd like to see, and I'll do my best to fulfill that for you. Keep in mind, uh, this is version 0.97, and we're probably only two or three weeks away from another release where they'll have uh, crossbows and robotic limbs and things like that. So uh, things could change quite a bit. Don't know how things will change, but uh, hopefully this will all still be a, uh, a useful way to start out. Um, so thanks for watching. This has been Bottom Line Up Front, and uh, I hope you tune back in.